Well, let's uh, let's rock and roll, man. Um, well, we've been starting these off uh, the same way every time. Um, tell the people who you are and what you do. All right. Um, my name is Stefan Mitch, and I am a uh, realtor. Um, I own my own real estate company. It's called Arkham Realty. And uh, we specialize in helping uh, first-time home buyers and investors, uh, mainly investors. Uh, we kind of have this little niche, uh, no pun intended, of uh, waka waka. You know, <laughs> with uh, these investors, uh, helping them flip houses, helping them uh, get these um, rental properties, and then placing tenants. Um, and then doing the whole property management aspect of, of the whole real estate thing, which I think we kind of like, we're one of the few that kind of do it all in one. Whereas, you know, typical just kind of realtor agent, I think they're just more concerned about selling houses and I kind of uh, do it all, I suppose. Right on. Well, for, for the unfortunate few who haven't seen your phenomenal billboards, and are just now getting their first sweet, sweet taste of Arkham Realty. Uh, is there like an aspect of Arkham that uh, you specifically are focused on right now that like you want to go deeper in on? Yeah, you know, I just I want to keep pushing the, the envelope with um, doing things that are like more unconventional where, you know, you have usually like these ads and billboards uh, for realtors where they're just kind of like, you know, like with their arms crossed and their suit. And I just want to, I guess, like keep pushing that envelope of, of doing like more crazy kind of uh, creative marketing without, and then, and, and, and I guess still keeping it professional, you know, and I was, I guess I was more concerned about that, like starting out, but now I have this kind of track record of all these like awesome, happy clients that have purchased homes through me and, um, so it's almost like that, that speaks for itself. So it kind of like lets me get away with crazier shit. Um, you know, and, uh, I, will actually have to text you this, uh, maybe you can like put it into the bottom of the screen. Uh, it's this, uh, funny little, uh, billboard design that I came up with and I actually sent it to Lamar and, uh, and they were like, no, we can't do that, dude. We just can't do it. <laughs> but, uh, we actually, uh, we have some things in the works as far as the, the next slew of billboards go. And uh, just had a design meeting with Lamar today and, and that, uh, that turned off pretty good, pretty funny. They, pretty funny. They sent out their photographer and took some cool pictures of us. <clears throat> and with that, like, I just want to like push more like a little bit of the zaniness. Like, so on the first billboard, I was kind of just like, you know, in the suit, like waving like hi, which was kind of uh, different for, I guess a realtor to do. And then, uh, so this time it's going to be kind of just pushing more of what we've been doing with like gimmicks and just stupid, silly shit. Just trying to keep it loose, trying to make it like a, a fun experience for people buying a house. Um, and, uh, and, and have it be like a personable experience. Like it's a big deal buying a house, you know, and, 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 and it, and it's stressful as hell and it can be an absolute nightmare, but, I kind of just want to like keep it like lighthearted and fun and, and, and not make it be this whole nightmare thing. Like, Oh, sell the, sign these papers and you know, this, that, and the other, but I mean, that does end up happening where it's like, Oh, Holy shit. We need these papers by three o'clock today. Boom. Out of nowhere. Like I'm, you know, just chilling here. And all of a sudden it's like everything, all hell breaks loose. Um, yeah. It just sounds like you're being authentically you with how yeah. you're handling a very serious industry and that industry has kind of always branded itself as being like very stiff and like kind of bland and you're kind of bringing your own flavor into it which you know we always appreciate you know me pat and fuse so yeah thank you i i just i think like so many people just like take themselves like way too seriously and uh and, and they're so concerned about, you know, this like professional image and, and just like, I'm a professional and blah, blah, blah. And like, of course, you know, of course you are, you're, you're a state licensed realtor, you know, everybody gets it. But the other thing too, is like, rather than going after these $2 million listings and, Oh, I'm a million dollar producer and all this shit. Um, I'd rather, you know, I'll sell $50,000 houses all day long. I don't care. Like, you know, I, as long as it's like the right house and everybody's happy 
Like I am, I don't need that, you know, $30,000 commission. I mean, do I want that? Sure. <laughs> you know, right. but, I, but I like that of course, but I'm not going to like put on all this like phony horseshit persona and you know, all this like hoity toity crap just to, just to get that. Um, but you know, uh, when I do get those listings, um, you know, I not, I still not get out of the park, you know, and, and, uh, the best, the best part of it is if, if, if it's like like-minded people that, that my clients and, and, uh, and my like sellers and buyers, I love it when it's like people that I know from like the metal scene or like from going like pro wrestling shows, stuff like that. And that's almost like who my, my advertising and, and marketing almost targets. Like I want people that own tattoo shops. I want people that you know, are into the kind of like same stuff as me. And I think a lot of those people sometimes get like disregarded. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot better these days, but you know, like, you know, if you show up with like full sleeves and a face tattoo and you own your own tattoo shop and, and uh, you roll up to like, you know, uh, uh, some stuffy realtor and you're like, Oh, Hey, I'd like to, you know, look into buying a house. And they're just going to be like, Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh. I'm not saying that all realtors are like that, but you know, you have that. No, and there's definitely all, a stigma you know, about just, that though, yeah, for you know, sure. Still is. And meanwhile, the, the person that's, that's, you know, wanting to buy this house and, you know, is covered in tattoos is probably making more money than that realtor. So it's like, you know, screw you, pal, you know, don't judge the <laughs> book by its cover, you know? So I want people to like, I don't, like I said, like I, I like to work with like-minded people and, people that are like down to earth and chill and you know we'll be on you know grab a couple of drinks and go look at some open houses and talk about marvel movies or you know just keep it light <laughs> and chill and then at the same time when it comes down to it like okay we're at the house now i'll say you know like hey this soft face is completely wrecked and ruined this foundation i think you should probably just bail you know this you know we don't we don't even need to bother getting a home inspection here because this place sucks and I'm not afraid to say that. I'm, I don't want that like desperate sale where it's like, oh, look how shiny the dishwasher is. You should definitely buy this. Like I have, I have somewhat of a background in construction. So that kind of helps my clients too. Because, you know, right off the bat, I'll say like, look, you got termites here and blah, blah, blah. Like you don't, you should probably not even waste your time with this. <laughs> right on. Well, that's actually, alone. that's right kind of in line with where I want to take all this. So uh, I touched base with you weeks ago to do this. And every time I was ready to get something on the books with you, the world decided to fall apart in some new unfortunate way. Uh, but the upside of that is uh, I had a lot of time to think about what to do here. So yeah, I'm going to yeah. dig into that now. Yeah. Um, when I first met you, you were physically the guy ripping apart houses and throwing old toilets out of blown out walls from like two or three stories up. And now you're wearing championship wrestling belts instead of tool belts. So take me on the full journey of where you started with Arkham all the way up to what it's become now. And oh, man, we have plenty of time. We have plenty of time. Neil, Jason. <laughs> no, but, uh, I, um, yeah, so I, um, I was like in all kinds of various sales jobs uh, in my twenties. I was doing the whole like touring metal band thing. We did like some regional tours and all that stuff. So it was always like kind of these sales jobs that I could like get in and out of. It was like no big obligation. And uh, those sales jobs eventually landed me uh, in, in banking. And I was working uh, at like a, a bank and then I ended up working at a, a, a university as like uh, recruiting students for schools and uh just really unhappy with it all and um i was in the middle of buying a house and buying my first rental and uh all this grass needed cut like the, the rental i was in and the rental i was buying and the house that we were buying and uh i was like uh oh wow you know how am i gonna get the, the mower to all these places and cut all this grass and um i used to do like a landscaping thing when i was like 12 or 13 years old and uh, I, it never like really went anywhere because I never had a vehicle or a truck or anything. Plus, I got into the whole band thing. And um, but uh, I was like, oh well, you know, screwed. I'm gonna I'm gonna fold the seats down in my Saturn Ion, 
and uh, shove this lawnmower in there and go bang out all these yards. And uh, I come back to the rental. I was like leaving and packing up and the landlord's there. And uh, I told him about this whole fiasco with all the grass. And he's like, oh yeah, you should start a little business. You can call it uh, Steven the Mower. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst thing ever. But uh, yeah, no, but I was like, it's something. And just thus, even the mower, mower was born. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, I just ended up just doing like a little, you know, just got some business cards printing up, printed up, uh, like uh, Vista Print. This is before the days of uh, some good print. And uh, and um, I just, um, I started just um, going out there and uh, passing out all these little cards and flyers. Yeah, one more of those, and uh, can I get an order of the crab cakes, please? Uh, just the appetizer for now, yeah. Uh, I got all you can add, all you can eat crabs with uh, Ali Oxen Blood later at, at five o'clock. So I oh, nice. <laughs> well, we've had her on here, so tell her yeah. I said, hey. Yeah, another shout out there, uh, Ravenwood Tattoo. Uh, oh, Ravenwood Collective. Collective, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I just like started like banging out these yards on the weekends and whenever I could, and uh, started accumulating all these clients and just uh, you know Facebook and all that stuff. And then uh, eventually, I just said screw it, and I quit the office job and just went um, full time with the lawns. And that was like one of those deals where it's like you have to take uh, a step back to take two forward. And, you know, it was like an instant pay cut. I mean, obviously, you know, going from what I was doing to cutting grass, but, you know, just worth, worth it in so many other ways. I mean, just like, let alone like drinking a beer at the end of a day like that. I mean, so much more satisfying than after sitting in an office all day. Um, um, uh, but, um, yeah, so um, within a year of doing these lawns, I ended up um, hooking up with... Um, the owner of the property management company, I ended up uh, getting my license, my real estate license through initially. So I was doing the yard at this place. He was getting the listing on this place and he was like, Oh, well, what else do you do? And I said, well, I can paint and you know, all this stuff. And I knew winter was coming up and um, <clears throat> he was like, Oh, what else? What else? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, you hang drywall. And I'm like, uh, yeah, I guess. And I yeah, could I <laughs> any of that in my life. And, Next thing I knew, I was like doing like flooring. I was like YouTubing all this shit, like drywall, and um, you know, just started just doing it and um, got the hang of it. And then that following spring, I did my my full um, my first full house renovation for one of their properties that they were managing for an investor who was flipping it and using it as a rental. Um, and uh, yeah, that spring. Uh, did that and then I ended up finding the tenant for that unit just it was this girl walking up and down the street like oh, I'm looking for an apartment that's for rent around here and I'm like I have no idea but this place is gonna be available pretty soon so you want to check it out and uh, she ended up renting it and uh, the owner of the property management company or the realty company at the time he was like well you should probably think about getting your real estate license so I think it was like that following year is when I finally got my license and uh, just uh, started kind of picking away at the whole, every little real estate aspect that that company was doing, like the property management, the leasing agent aspect, um, you know, and then helping first time home buyers. Thanks Jason, appreciate it, man. Um, and then uh, ultimately uh, I want to say it was in, uh, like 2017, 2018, like three or four, four years later, um, I ended up um, like becoming a partner with the owner of that company to do like some flips. Uh, and we, we partnered up and uh, did a couple flips in Sharpsburg. And then um, I ended up uh, shortly after that leaving that company. And that's, that's when I got my broker's license and, and started Arkham Realty. Yeah. right on uh i so i find these stories unbelievably important for people to hear because like seeing may be believing but there's so much that goes on behind the scenes that people don't get to see before you grow to the point of where you are carrying around a gilded championship belt and wearing suits that don cherry dreams about owning um <laughs> 
So there's, and like, not for nothing, there's a long and lonely and like often lonely road for small business owners to build up to where they are and then even more yet to where they actually want to be. Uh, so like, I, that's, that, I think that's like my new, my new thing with these podcasts is I, I really want to see where people came from, where they're at, where they're thinking about going and kind of letting everybody that takes for granted people that have small businesses, all the work that goes into getting there yeah it's it's the work it's like putting in the time and the hours and it's it's a it's a lot of the sacrifices and stuff like it cost me a lot uh personally um you know like i uh even with the lines you know like owning your own business like you don't get days off you don't have vacation time you don't you know i didn't have any of that and it was just uh it, it was like the last day of the month, let's say was a Sunday. And I wanted to get like a total of three or four cuts in on every yard. So I could bill for three or four cuts for that month. Um, oh, well, grandma's cooking dinner at five o'clock and it's, you know, uncle Joe's birthday. Well, sorry, dude, like can't do it. And it's, it's one of those things. It's like a sink or swim thing. Like, you know, you, you want to be there, you want to make time, but it's like, if I make that time, then everything fails. And then what, what can I provide to like my family and, and, and anybody around me if I'm, you know, like, right. It's like, I mean, I'll, I, I'll lose everything. I mean, as I know that's an extreme, you know, if I don't cut these lawns, I'll, I'll, I'll be homeless, but it, uh, it gets to be hectic like that, you know, like even like at the time when there was like an additional 500 bucks riding on the line, you know, or like, you know, I got to get this done before the, I just, you got to have these deadlines and goals for yourself. Otherwise it's just not going to get done. I think that's, that's something I've always done is um, like, I love, I love to lay around and do nothing. Like I love staring at the ceiling and stuff like that. It's great. You know, just laying around all morning, drinking coffee, reading, inter, uh, eating, uh, reading articles and stuff like that. But I know how I am. So I, I always have to put my back against the wall on purpose like I'm like my own taskmaster and I always put myself in these situations where I have to perform. Otherwise yeah. I am just going to like play Zelda all day. Like <laughs> it's, you know, if I don't get this done right now, I am screwed. So it's, it's always kind of been like that for me. It's like, uh, it's, I have to like discipline myself in that regard. Thank you so You're much. Welcome. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, there's been so many times where, um, I had to, uh, even with like the, you know, I was like cutting grass, like as the sun was setting and, uh, people were always like making fun of me because it was like, you got to get some, uh, some headlights on that mower. And, like, <laughs> like, Can you turn on your, your yard light, sir? Can you turn on your front porch light? Cause I'd be going until like eight or nine o'clock. And, uh, uh, and then I was, you know, for two years of doing that landscaping business, I was doing, um, I had that same Saturn eye on with the seats folded down, except there was like two mowers now and two weed whackers and I'd have like helpers every one, once in a while. But yeah, I was, I was running that whole business. Like, I don't know, I want to say it was like 65 or 75 uh, clients um, or, you know, properties, lawns or whatever, all out of that stupid little Saturn eye on. So my, my uh my overhead was really low but every day people were like you need a truck and i'm like yeah no shit <laughs> well just to <laughs> the uh, small tangent related to that just veering off a little bit you started it back up yeah so i have this thing like programmed in my head now like twofold like so first of all like it's like this this automatic clock where every april 15th that's like my go day for landscaping. It's like, oh shit, it's April 15th. This is when I start my lawns. So every year I'm like, I get this like lawn anxiety and I have to like go cut grass. And then, so this year um, there was, uh, you know, everything with COVID going on and real estate was like super slow. We were just doing like the property management aspect of things because people still needed like the repairs done and, and all that, but you know, we couldn't sell or, or buy for our clients. And uh, I was like, well, I got some extra time <laughs> and I got this bug up my ass. 
So I uh, I pulled out all the old gear and I was like, who needs their grass? <laughs> I need something to do. You know, like I could have been like, you know, I should have bought like a canvas. I could have like learned how to play guitar better or something. But I just, I don't know. Like I love, I still love like the physical labor. Like I love, you know, running jackhammers and all that and, and, and going out there and breaking shit. Like I wish I still had the time to throw more toilets out of second story windows and demo stuff, you know. Um, and I miss that. You know, I got to get back to that. <laughs> That's like my goal now. I got to like grow my business so that I can throw toilets out of windows again so that's funny because like i'm so inundated in tech now like when people when people think of me they basically you know associate me with star wars and tech and but like my upbringing was was so like man of the landish my you know my my dad was from beaver county you know they're all big hunters i used to hunt back in the day i used to do chopping wood i used to do gardening and all this stuff and like yeah. so like not for nothing. I've got all the survival skills and there is something very satisfying about when you accomplish those tasks. They oh, suck yeah. in the oh, moment. Yeah. Like as you're, as you're sweating, as you're like cutting yourself and bruising yourself and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. It all sucks in the moment. But like the minute you finish, there's something so unbelievably satisfying about that. Um, and like I, the, those are those types of feelings that like, I think it helps if like when you're an entrepreneur, like when you're in a really, really like, I don't know, not complicated, but just like a frustrating situation, knowing that all I got to do is keep at it, keep at it, keep at it it might suck right now, but then it's going to feel amazing. Like, you know, that that thing is at the end, you're kind of chasing that right. dragon, but it's a, it's attainable. Yeah. I think if I like would have thought to myself, like, or if I came to the realization, like, Oh shit, I'm going to cut grass for the rest of my life. Then I would have been like, Oh man, you know, cause I think about, you know, like my knee kind of hurts now, my back kind of hurts now. You know, I was, you know, I'm 39 now. I was, you know, whatever at the time I did it from the time I was 30 till, you know, I think for six years or something like that. And at the time, you know, my, you know, I felt like an old man already. And I'm like, shit, what am I going to do when I'm like 50? I'm not going to be cutting grass, you know, or I hope not to be. So my, my goal from the get go was always to own rental properties from, you know, the time I was like 16, I was always like, when I was doing the band thing, I was like, yeah, I'm going to get signed. And then I'm going to use that signing bonus, you know, back when they had that with like record labels, <laughs> they give you like some like lump sum or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to use that to buy uh, uh, my first rental property. That was like my goal. So like, it was always like the underlying goal, like behind everything I did. And, uh, and I'm glad I did that because it's like, that's, that's, that's kind of like my base pay, you know, like I have the rents coming in as long as the tenants are happy and everyone's paying. That's kind of like my base pay. So when I, go to sell a house to somebody I'm not like stressing out like oh my god if they don't buy this house I'm gonna be bankrupt so I've, I've got myself to that level of kind of like security like where um, you know I don't, I don't have to sweat selling these places or, or, or doing these things on a on a, on a daily basis um, but that was that was always kind of like the the goal when doing these lawns like every you know um I, I put all all my friends are like buying all this like all these like cars and trucks and you know here I am with a landscaping business and I don't have a truck and they're like buying quads and jet skis and all this crazy shit and uh and here I am like just dumping everything I had into buying more rentals so it's like I bought all my rentals with, with grass money <laughs> right and well that's so that's kind of like uh one of the things that I talk about, or at least, you know, I've had a lot of conversations about is like the amount of sacrifices that you make um, being a small business owner or wanting to, you know, grow a small business is like not always buying that nice thing that you oh, yeah. can afford or like not going to that concert, not going out to that bar and having those drinks with your friends while everybody else is going out, not being able to make it to like that family thing that, you know, everybody's kind of guilting you to go to but right. you know you have something to do, to do and if you don't do it it's got a cascading effect or you miss out on an opportunity that you can grow on like there's so many of these sacrifices and a lot of the time you do catch flack for it right like people will guilt you 
for not showing up or for not yeah. having and, something and, or and i'd have i'd have so many nights dude like before i had like an assistant or, or any of that when i was like first starting arkham um you know it was just me in like a little room with no windows the only window i had like overlooked the the banquet hall at the Penn brewery the eisen hall and i'd be in there until like two or three o'clock in the morning like doing statements like like a like a more like i, I you know i'm like sitting there tight like i don't tight you know i mean i'm yeah. not that i don't know i'm just like duh, 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 and putting together these statements and every two keystrokes it's wrong and i gotta redo it and i'm just like you know just you're tired you're fatigued and you know i'd be there till like two or three in the morning and then uh you know i just end up crashing at the office you know what i mean and then uh you know that that doesn't look too good especially if you're in a marriage you know so you know that has its its uh effects and tolls and, and prices that you pay and yeah so it, that's it's it's all it's you know it's really hard to kind of like maintain all that at the same time but it's like again it's like sink or swim it's like what are you going to do it's like almost like life or death kind of a thing and i just i just have that that work ethic that i, I got from I, 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 I inherited from my dad and it was like instilled in me and it was almost like my main interaction with my like my dad's 50 years older than me so I wasn't like you know going on hikes with him because I was like 16 and he was you know whatever 66 you know with his messed up knees I'm not gonna go rock climbing and hiking with my dad and do all these activities and shit like my activities with my dad was was working around the house right so you know it was that was kind of like my interaction so i think it's like one of those like positive reinforcement things it's like yeah i get to spend time with my dad but it's 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 you know busting up these bricks uh, <laughs> or whatever. so um you know that, it's just that's kind of it's, it's like manual labor is always almost like a, a like a pleasurable <laughs> thing like you know, like I like I'm hating it at the time, but like you said, at the end of the day, it's like, oh man, it's so awesome. Especially that you like to kick back and have a beer with your dad, and it's you know, it's it's an awesome, rewarding feeling. Yeah, it was, well, it's kind of funny. Like as a kid, you don't really get to have that beer, so you're just kind of like, well, I always like, <laughs> well, I, I'm well, drinking when, Coke through this always, anyways. So when you're from then Austria, you have that beer later for whatever reason, it being a cold beer after you're done working there's something about it it is truly yeah. amazing um i don't know if i'm allowed to bring this up but like uh you know we're talking about kind of like the origins and then like to where you're at now do you want to say like kind of what the status is of your boss's company i can chop this out if you want of the status of what sorry cut up of, your, second. of your old boss's company Oh yeah, yeah. So um, that guy, um, David Paola, I mean, he's great. I mean, he's been in the business, you know, for I don't even know, 30, 40 years. Um, he's 20 years older than me, and uh, he he was like my my mentor through all this. You know, he he taught me everything I know. <laughs> Getting all fucking choked up here, but uh, uh -huh. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. And uh, he. Uh, you know, just taught me everything and uh, kind of like threw, you know, tossed me the ball several times and I just ran with it. And, uh, uh, you know, and then he was fully supportive of me leaving his company and starting Arkham. And then, uh, you know, and then two years later, we kind of got together for a meeting um, and um, we kind of started talking about things, like how things were going with his company and where I was with things. And then uh, I think a few months later, we basically signed the paperwork for me to buy his company and uh, for him to come on as uh, the uh, associate broker of record and uh, an agent in my office. So uh, it's just like a total win-win. I mean, um, to have you know access to that whole wealth of experience and knowledge with him uh, is, is amazing because you know, you come across like some weird screwy deals and scenarios in this line of work where it's like, oh, this buyer wants to do this contingency based on the tax blob. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I, you know, I sent him a text like, totally cool. Um, uh, 
yeah, it's just uh, just a win-win, and he doesn't have to deal with any of his like office nonsense anymore that he was dealing with because it's. I mean, it was just too much for 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 him or anybody really, you know, to manage this office and uh, and, and and try and like still make sales and, and do all that, be a realtor at the same time. And I'm fortunate enough to um, have an awesome office manager. Uh, it's another person I would be uh, nowhere without. I mean, she Lark, Larkin Coles. Shout out, shout out to Larkin Cole. Yeah, absolutely amazing. I, I couldn't do it without her, seriously. Um, so she handles just everything and anything. And I'm like, hey, what's going on with this thing for this, for this owner with the statement? We got to do this by Friday. And she's like, oh, yeah, I did that on Tuesday, bro. Like, <laughs> I mean, every time. So she just knocks out of the park. Absolutely awesome human being. It's always good to have all stars around you, man. Oh yeah, Absolutely. on every level. Um. So speaking of which, explain the championship belt. All right. So <laughs> I was working with um, a personal trainer at the time. Like, I guess this was about three years ago. Um, Brittany Ray, Lady Frost. Uh, Lady Frost. A, Shout out yeah. to Lady Frost. <laughs> um and she she's a pro wrestler she's been on uh wwe monday night raw um and uh, with her husband they're like this really awesome tag team uh literally and <laughs> figuratively um but uh yeah i was doing a uh, personal training at wright's gym in crafton another shout out there um and uh and she was like uh do you know uh you know david allen and i'm like no and he she said, oh, he does uh, custom suits. You should check into that, you know, like look into it. If you want to get some suits made, he does uh, suits for John Cena and uh, Vince McMahon. And he's, you know, right here in Pittsburgh. I'm like, no shit. So I hit him off. I didn't and, know that. Uh, That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Like I know who he is. I just didn't know he had those types of clients. That's crazy. Oh, Rick, Rick Flair. I mean, that's just to name a few. I mean, I've been to his place and there's like packages like, going out and it's like to rick flair like <laughs> shout out to rick flair how you doing bro <laughs> uh but uh yeah um so yeah I, I i linked up with him and you know did the whole custom suit experience i got like two or three suits made with him and then i found out that um he was doing um a fashion show to benefit a cause I, I forget what it was i think it was like susan coleman or something like that um and um and they were looking for sponsors for the fashion show and i said i'll do that and um i was one of the sponsors and i found out that um he was actually having a bunch of the wwe wrestlers at the fashion show so like the new day was there uh you know like biggie uh kofi kingston um Xavier Woods, uh, just all these wrestlers. Uh, I can't think of them all right now, man. I, I'm not in my wrestling <laughs> brain right now. It's all but, good, uh, man. Yeah. Um, but um, I, uh, I don't know how I came up with this idea, though, but I was like, well, you know, if David Allen is uh, the suit guy for WWE, then maybe I could be the real estate guy for WWE, at least here in Pittsburgh. So I uh, – Again, I don't know how I came up with this. I don't know how I come up with half the shit I come up with, but um, I uh, I found out that um, the the guy that makes um, the um, the championship belts for WWE is actually out of Latrobe. No way. Yeah, yeah, Andrew. Um, it's called Wildcat Belts, and uh, you can get like the actual like legit belts that like the same quality that they have on TV and all that shit made. And uh, so I had that Arkham belt made and, uh, and just for that fashion show. And it was kind of like my like coming out party, you know, <laughs> it was like I rolled in with that custom David Allen suit carrying that belt. And uh, I just kind of did it as like, you know, to, to like draw attention to Arkham. And, but uh, everybody lost their fucking minds at, at the, at the, at the fashion show. Like, I remember, like, the New Day, like, this, like, three-piece tag team was being interviewed on the red carpet by this this dude, like, doing interviews or whatever like that. I forget the name of it. Um, 
and uh, I have this whole thing on film. And as they're being interviewed, you can like kind of see me in the background, like getting my picture taken on the on the red carpet. And uh, the guy doing the interview like sees it out of the corner of his eye, and he just he's like, oh oh oh, hey, well, the champs here, hold on hold on, the champs here. And he completely <laughs> like cuts off the interview with the New Day, who are like actual WWE superstars, like probably the tag team champions at the time or something like that. And uh, and, and he like, gets you because he thinks you're a wrestler? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. And uh, That's hilarious, dude. So, uh, you know, I go up there and I'm just like completely, uh, what's it called? Uh, starstruck, A, you know, because the New Day is right there. And then uh, I'll do one more whenever you get a chance, Jason. And, uh, um, and then, you know, they're throwing this camera in my face and they're like, what's the name of your company? And I'm like, Arkham real estate. I don't know. Ooh. Like I was just totally <laughs> taken back by the whole thing. I'm like, Oh my God, like, why are you doing this to me? He put me on the spot in front of them, like next to them. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was hilarious. I'll, I'll, I'll send you the clip. It was, it was pretty good. That's funny, um, man. Yeah. We should put it on like the tail end of this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was super embarrassed and stuff, but yeah, I mean, um, I ended up, um, exchanging like information, uh, email addresses with a couple of these guys like Stu Bennett and, uh, Jinder Mahal and these guys that were interested in buying some real estate around Pittsburgh and stuff like nothing came of it, but you know, it was still cool to kind of like get my feet wet with that. And then I'm almost glad it didn't happen because it was probably too much too soon. It's like, Hey, I just got my broker's license and my client is, <laughs> a world famous wrestler it's almost right. you know what i mean like you want to like get your your feet wet first before you have like a high profile client like that you don't want to like screw something like that up <laughs> yeah you just want to have your bases covered yeah yeah so um yeah that's that's kind of how that that came about and uh and then it just like became this thing where everybody that does a transaction with me you know like gets to like hold up the belt and Feel less. I'm, I'm, I think for three years I've been trying to like come up with like a tagline that isn't totally cheese ball cheesy. Like, feel like a champion with Arkham Realty. Oh like, God. Ugh, you know, like I, I have no idea. But, but I get it. I know where you're going with it. It's just like kind of like this quiet thing where it's just like, yay. Like, you know, <laughs> well, I mean, so not for nothing. Said. I've, I've looked, I've been like in and out of looking for houses over the past couple of years. So I get that. It's like, it's a slog, man. Like it's a long game, you know? Yeah, yeah. So like when you, I, I can imagine whenever you finally sign those papers and you get those keys, you feel like a champion. I'm sure. Yeah. It's like, you just like made it through like the Royal rumble, like some slobber knocker and because it is it's like this just giant whirlwind whirlwind of shit and just chaos and you know the i mean the just landing thing. a rental like i'm a renter right now yeah. like just landing a rental whenever whenever you're looking and a lot of the times you are under the gun for that because you have like a lease that's about to run out but you're trying to get out of that spot like then you you get your rental and you're like oh thank god like i'm all good now like so yeah, if that's absolutely. how I feel just getting my rental, like how about yeah. never having to look for a house again if I don't want to? <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I definitely get that. Um, so motivation is something that just fascinates me with entrepreneurs. So way back when, what was your motivation to get started, to like get dirty and muck through the grind and the hustle and then what's your motivation now to keep going? I think the main thing was always to like have like my, my freedom, like independence, um, just be able to like plan my week however I want, you know, whether I want to, uh, I know it sounds like super like bratty and like luxurious, but it's like, do I, you know, do I want, well, it's, it's almost like, I guess anybody else, like, okay, do I take a vacation this week or not? Right? You're essentially like deciding, am I working this week or not? Like, am I going to do something for myself? Am I going to push the business? You know, it's that sort of a thing. And, uh, but even if it's like, you know, what, what days this week am I going to work? You know, and what days am I going to do something for myself? What days am I going to do something 
for my family? Like, when am I going to hang out with my daughter? Like, just planning everything, like, to make it, like, the optimum kind of a thing. You know, like, oh, well, Tuesday's really going to be a nice day. So maybe, you know, that day, you know, I'll do this, that, and the other uh, with, my, with my daughter, for instance. Um, right. Rather than, um, you know, doing, you know, like – being on this like nine to five schedule where your only free day might be Saturday. And of course that's the day that it rains and storms and stuff like that. So you can't do anything outside that you wanted to do. You can't go on a hike with your daughter. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just like having that like flexibility of kind of doing whatever. Um, that's, that's always been my motivation and hence buying these rental properties because, you know, as long as everybody's paying rent, there's really not much, for you to do, especially if you have the infrastructure I have with the property management company, because right. I flow all my own shit through the property management aspect of my company. So if there's a repair call, they can just go on arkhamrealty.com and request a repair. And I have like very little to do with that. Again, thanks to awesome people like Larkin Cole, uh, Larkin Coles and, um, um, all, you know, my, the rest of my staff. Um, so, uh, that's, that's definitely like always been a, a huge motivator for me. It's just having that, that flexibility and just being able to pick up and go like, Hey, let's go to Spain for two weeks. Let's, you know, see the world do stuff and not, not be trapped in this thing. Uh, that's just absolutely like disgusting to me. <laughs> it's just, yeah. Well, so in in all of this like in the vein of all of this uh you're you were kind of like leaning towards saying like well you know you know it might sound selfish but but to me like whenever somebody says that about uh how they want their work life to be like it's not being selfish or it can be i guess if you want to say that but what that really means is like my happiness really matters like I wouldn't be happy doing something else. I wouldn't be happy cooped up in an office. I wouldn't be happy having some job that was like so cookie cutter and I wasn't able to be creative and I wasn't able to excel and I wasn't able to learn or challenge myself. Like, like, so like whenever I hear somebody like start to get weird about like, be like, oh, it might sound selfish, but like, no, no, this is your life. Like if, it, if you're not going to be selfish for you, who's going to do it? That and, and the thing is, is if, if I don't succeed, like, I'm not going to be happy uh, with, and I'm not going to be able to provide happiness to others. Like, I don't want to be that dude that comes home at like five o'clock with a briefcase and slams the door and goes like, Ugh, you know, like, yeah, only complain office today, fuck. And then like, has to have like a, you know, I mean, I'll probably have a drink anyways, but <laughs> uh, it'll know, be like, in a different mode though. You'll be, it'll yeah, be you know, a whole like, different like, mode. Yeah, it was awesome, you know, I'm, you know, but it's not like one of those like depressing drinks and then they like sit there and they're just fucking miserable. And I was there, I was there, I was that guy, you know, like in the office thing, man. Like I was like 250 pounds the, the bad way, you know, just like misery eating, just, you know, stuff in my face. Now I'm like 250 the good way. <laughs> uh, but uh yeah it's just um sorry it's gotten out here for a minute okay now you're all good over here cool, cool. all right um but yeah i just i want everybody around me to be happy and i want to make people happy but until i get to that level where i can give like what I want to give, like it's, it, it's a lot of like self-sacrifice and uh, a lot of work. Um, and you know, it's, it's a, a lot, a lot of people may not have the patience for that. You know, it's like, they're just like, you know, all he does is work or, you know, I don't, blah, blah, blah. And it's, you know, just like, hold on a minute. You know, I'm like, I'm almost there. And yeah. I just want to be able to like give back and, provide this like uh lifestyle for for people around me that i care about and and have it be like dope for everybody like i just want to be able to like hit up all my friends like yo let's go you know to colorado and you can it's all on me and uh watch me break my collarbone again <laughs> <laughs> 
uh, oh man, that was insane. Slap my meat around. Do you remember that? I had that giant. Yeah, you, stick you had, it was a, uh, a like a pork loin or something. <laughs> Just pork loin. <laughs> and you're cooking one handed because you broke your collarbone. <laughs> yeah. Which was amazing though. It tasted great. The pork loin great. turned out all right. Yeah. You're a great. I don't know where chef. I got that at, but. Um. Yeah, we way over shopped at the beginning of that. Uh, yeah, yeah, that grocery run. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, this is kind of interesting. So, after all that, we talk about like you being, you wanting to be happy, you wanting to give other people the same opportunity. You got a little choked up, you know, yeah. talking about like you, you know all I do that a lot. You, of you being ideas. able to, you being able to, you know, pick up your 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 boss's company after he's helped you out and everything like that. So like, just like as a person, like with that whole journey in mind, like how are you feeling? Like, how do you feel about all that now? It's, it's honestly like emotionally overwhelming really. Cause it's just like, it's been like such a crazy ride and like um, so many up and downs, you know, like weekly up and downs, hourly up and downs. I mean, it's just, daily up and down it's, it's just it's a lot and it's emotionally draining so i just feel like i'm like in a kind of like really like emo place <laughs> it's why it's like i like even on saturday i was out on the boat i got choked up about shit like it's just non-stop man like <laughs> i gotta get gotta get my shit under control man but it's like uh just i'm, I'm just so happy about so many things and 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 so stressed out about so many things and grateful for so many things and pissed off about so many things and just overwhelmed it's just so fucking emotional and i'm i'm kind of an emotional dude and uh it's it's a it's a little bit a lot <laughs> but uh yeah. so i mean overall man i mean i like i said man i have so many awesome people around me um i'm, I'm a really i feel really fortunate just to you know know people like you and just, uh everybody that i just have a relationship with man i love seeing people and uh running into people and i haven't seen in a while or you know, people i work with on a regular basis like just the the connections i've made um i just i just i just really like love everybody in my life so much just uh i'm so grateful for it well i mean you, you structured it well and i mean you 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 took basically the reins of your entire life and you made everything what you want it to be, which is like, I, like I could use you as an example to anybody because I, I, I like what you've done. I've seen what you've done. I know the people around you. I know the situation you were in. I know the situation you are in. Like you are a good, like for me to me, you are a good example to show to somebody else that like, you can do what you want and you can make your life what you want it to be. Uh, you just have to, you just have to like basically be accountable for everything. Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, I, I always say like, um, I, I was never really like, I was never handed anything, you know, like um, I, I was handed a lawnmower <laughs> and my dad was like, cut the grass, you go cut the grass. You know, and that was like, you know, that, that work ethic and that sort of a thing. And uh, that, I guess that's, that's kind of like what I really lucked out with is that that sort of work ethic uh, instilled in me in, in a, in a, at an early age. Um, but uh, I uh, lost my train of thought there. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, I mean, I, you're, I, I think you, you were just doubling down on what I was saying that, uh, like you, you can, you can have what you want. You just got to work oh, for it. Yeah. I was, that's what I was getting at. Like I've, I, I've kind of like just kind of clawed and scratched my way to where I'm at right now. It's just always been, you know, like I failed my real estate license test. I failed my broker's license test and like, uh, you know, doing these yards and just buying these, the first, one of the first rentals I, uh, I bought, um, you know, like I, I picked it up for seven grand, but it required, $25,000 of foundation work I didn't know about. Um, so, and I like no money at the time, no lines of credit, nothing. I had like five or six different credit cards with like 300 bucks on each one. <laughs> I put these bricks on this one, put the concrete on this one and just like 
piecing it all together, but just never like sounds hokey and cheesy, but just not giving up, just like picking away at it and just not stopping, just always finding a way to keep going and just, uh, you know, and then, and then that place, that place almost killed me. Like the foundation almost fell on me, you know, it was like, it's just, uh, but you know, literally uh, buried by debt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It was absolutely nuts. Uh, but you just got to keep going, you know, and, and, and sometimes things don't work out and then it's like, you realize they didn't work out for a reason and you try to push things that you shouldn't push and uh, you know and, and as long as you you're, you're doing something towards what you're into what your goal is like you're gonna get somewhere you know as long as you just keep even though you might feel like your your <laughs> your wheels are spinning you know you're yeah. still keep grinding don't be stagnant yeah, yeah you know and, and just don't and, and then you know and then of course like all the naysayers man oh my god you know like holy shit like i remember i was at a, at a buddy's wedding and i was talking to his dad <laughs> and uh, this dude's a character but uh he uh he's like yeah yeah so what have you been up to and i'm like well i just quit my office job to cut grass he's like what you're a fucking idiot <laughs> And I'm like, oh, well, thanks, pal. Like, <laughs> but you know, and, and just like, oh, well, everybody flips houses and everybody does this and that. And, you know, like, ah, oh, that's no good and blah blah blah. You know, like all these like old heads and stuff. Like, it's like whatever you want to do, man, just just do it. Fuck everybody else, dude. I I hope that he's somebody that's like close by that can see you now. I I, I hope he's just eating his words and and, and just like getting getting a huge feel of it. Yeah, All that I crow. Don't, I don't, yeah, I don't wish that upon. And some people just don't. You know, they're just the way they are. You know, you can't really. <laughs> There's like so many like uh, negativity, man. Like that's what that's a whole other topic. You know, you have like motivation, and you have negativity. That's like so many, just, like blocking out all that those stupid thoughts, you know, and just like all that self doubt and uh, like oh, you know, I'm gonna put this billboard up and look like an idiot, and then it's like hey, you look like an idiot, but it's awesome, you know. So, <laughs> um, you know, it all, it all works out, but it's just all about doing shit and well, not everything's going to work out the way you want it but at least it's like a learning experience and i guess i'm kind of like naive and, and and overly positive about shit you know my my buddy made fun of that he was like oh man you, you could flip up flip over flip your car over like 80 times completely wreck it and trash it and you can get you'll, you'll just get out and be like oh yeah they'll buff out it'll be cool yeah just put this door back on and yeah and he, I think he's still upset to this day that I uh, broke his wardrobe, his, uh, <laughs> his dresser. What's up, Ash? Uh, well, so to get into, like, not get into the weeds, actually, like, get kind of micro into what, uh, what you focus on, like, an industry that I don't have my finger as tightly on the pulse as I probably should have is real estate. Uh, given everything that's gone down with COVID-19, uh, I still hear that the real estate, like the whole sector is booming. Uh, so what's the current state of affairs as it pertains to Pittsburgh real estate? Yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. Ever since everything went green, um, we've just been just overwhelmed with people wanting to buy and sell. And, uh, you know, just crazy, crazy scenarios. You know, like I had like clients from Wisconsin FaceTiming houses with me, like FaceTime viewing houses and then putting in offers and like going like 30 grand above asking price and still not getting it. And they were like one out of 14 offers. And it's just like, dear God, you know, and just, uh, just these absolute like dumps, you know, just shells of houses selling for, everything's above asking price right now. It's, it's an absolute, I mean, if you're trying to sell your house, if you ever, you know, thought about selling your house, do it, do it now, <laughs> do it now. <laughs> well, my parents are taking your advice. They have no idea where they're going to go with their mount, their houses on the market. Yeah. That's, it's, it's such a great time for that right now. 
And then um, I have a feeling, though, that by the end of the year, uh, by, like, the beginning of next year, there's probably going to be – it's all going to kind of come crashing down uh, as far as all that goes. So I'm kind of just, like, holding out right now to, to buy, like, any kind of new rental property or anything like that probably until, until next year. So if you got anything kind of sitting around – I recommend selling it and then reinvesting it following year because unfortunately I think there's going to be like a, a shit ton of like uh, foreclosures and just all kinds of terrible things happening like that. And I, and I don't want to like sound like a, you know, like a shark or something like I'm like waiting for this, you know what I mean? Uh, it's not like I'm, I'm hoping for, you know, people to lose their house, but it's, it's going to happen. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully, you know, it's it's something where it can be turned into like a positive situation where I can I can buy it and turn it into like an affordable rental property for somebody else who needs a place to live, you know. Uh, right. Because I mean, I think that's definitely going to be the next thing. Uh, I think I heard something like upwards of like 32 percent of people weren't able to pay their rent over the last three months, something like that. And if basically they don't extend that eviction moratorium, there's going to be like like one in 10 people are going to be out on the street. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I've, I've been really fortunate to have these awesome tenants who are, you know, were able to get some sort of financing or assistance or unemployment and they, they still paid their rents, you know, and that's another thing. Like I wish I was one of these landlords that were like, Hey, don't worry about paying rent for the next three months. I, I wish I was already in that position. Like I hope to be, that one day where I can offer that and provide that. Uh, but it's unfortunate. Like I, all my, all the stuff that I own, like has a mortgage on it. Right. So I still have to pay my mortgage. Um, I still have to pay for, you know, uh, some of the places have utilities included. So I'm still paying for the utilities. I'm still paying for repair calls. And I think a lot of people don't really under, like take that into consideration. They're like, Oh, fuck rent. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you're the next level up. You're you're the guy that like if if they say fuck rent and you're like, well, then I'm screwed. Then me and my family are. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And and yeah, and I just think people don't. You know, it's it's one thing if you like uh, own the the place outright and you know you've been sitting on it for fifty years. You know, then maybe you know, especially if that, if you've had a tenant for a while, then you know, cut somebody a break. Right. But I mean, for me, it's like if two or three people don't pay at the end of the day, (laughs) I really don't make anything at all. Right. So it's like it's a real slim margin with that. It's not as uh, it's not as awesome as people think or as awesome as it could be. Like if I didn't have overhead or a mortgage or something like that. But um yeah, but I like I said, I, I wish I could I could offer that. Like I saw yeah, the world's in a messy place right now, man. It's yeah. really really crazy. Um, but I don't I don't want to get all that that's that's freaking depressing, and uh, I feel like we already made you cry once. So uh, we're we're basically on the final uh, we're on the home stretch now. I'm not gonna keep you. For I, I hit the long. other two cryings pretty well. <laughs> if you didn't notice them, don't review the tape and look for them either. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I'll just, I'll just circle like there's a tear. Like I'll just put it in the yeah. video. Fucking <laughs> arrow. <laughs> um. So yeah, we're on the, we're on the home stretch of this. We're, we're about to wrap up. Um. So any big things planned coming down the pipeline for Arkham? Yeah. So I'm like one of these. Another thing is like I, I, as far as like putting my back against the wall. Like I. I I don't, I don't know. I guess that's not, I don't like, I don't like saying I'm going to, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And then something falls through and then I look like an idiot. Um, so there, there are some things in the works and uh, I don't want to like, I guess spill the beans too much, but uh, definitely keep an eye out. There's some, uh, I always want to like, you know, just keep doing things and like doing new things and just, uh, pushing things and not like settling for stuff you know i mean very cryptic but i think i get it yeah yeah there's just going to be more of more (laughs) of 
more 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 Stefan antics. Yes, yeah. That's, that's uh, true. <laughs> so we like to wrap these up with something interactive. Uh, you get to ask the people listening anything you'd like to know from them. So what are you wondering about that you'd like to ask the fine humans that are watching? So of course that whole part where you just asked me all that completely cut out. So I have no idea what you were well, you, just, uh, yeah, you paused. I, so I figured I have to say it again. Uh, you get to ask the people that are listening, anything you'd like to know from them. So what are you wondering about that you would like to ask the people watching? Oh man. What? Uh, oh man. Oh man. It can be serious. It can be totally dumb. One of the first ones was like Netflix recommendation. Oh yeah. Yeah. Huh. Oh man. I don't know. I'm all over the place right now. My, my brain is just, I've, ugh, I'm going to have to think about this one. What do, what do you think about, uh, uh, what do you think about, uh, you like crab cakes? Yeah. Where's got the best crab cakes? Um, these ones are pretty good. This is my, Oh, crab cakes on the keyboard. <laughs> this is my first time having the uh, crab cakes here. Hey, it's our friend Allie. Hey, hey there she is. Let's see what, see what yeah, she has. Pick her up. Hey, Allie. Hey, are you outside? Yeah, I'm on the patio here. Are you coming? You, you can still be on the podcast. Here she comes. Special guest appearance. She'll be the oh, first uh, one on twice. Yeah. But the, uh, the thing here, though, is the, uh, uh, the all-you-can-eat crab. Redfin Blues with the all-you-can-eat crab. That's, that's what's up here. Right on. Well, well, I guess we have a suggestion instead of a, uh, instead of a question, which is, which is equally fine. But we're, is. Before we wrap up, I'm going to – we got to say hey. – What up? Hey. Hi. How's it going, Eli? It goes, it goes. You, I was just saying that you are, uh, you're the first one that's been on this twice now. Right oh, on, that's man. not true. That's okay. not true. Becca from Heart of Glasses. So you're the second one. Who was, who was on? When, Becca when, from Heart of Glass. She's, uh, she's down in Lawrenceville too. Oh, right on, on uh, Butler Street. Yeah, th uh, she's down by um, uh, Round Corner. Oh, hell yeah. I've seen it. Yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. But, uh, awesome to see you again. We'll, uh, we'll have to talk. I, ha I have, I have, uh, I have ink ideas we need to go over. Anytime, man. Just, just give me a call. Don't leave it to me or I will probably forget. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, th things have been crazy. Once, once business opened back up, it got a little nuts. Um, but we're, we're basically wrapping up right now. So lastly, uh, tell the people where they can reach you, your website, your social media, all the things. Yeah. Um, Arkham uh, will pretty much take you. Anywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Arkham I'm on Facebook, uh, with that. And then, uh, Instagram, Bruce man, Batwain 32, uh, yeah, let's check out the website. Drop me a line. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me, man. It's really, really awesome. Uh, Dude, thanks for, the thanks for doing it. I'm super grateful, and it's, uh, I appreciate you a lot, man. Really yeah, man. It. Thanks for doing it. I'm glad things are going well. I'm glad you're with Ali. Uh, no, I mean this is this was great. Um, the like. Yeah, we're we're kind of refleshing out our format, and uh, you're you were basically my guinea pig on uh, how I was gonna do this, and it worked out better than I can imagine. And and I uh, I, I thank you just because you were patient with me. It took me forever to actually get this set up, um, but uh, yeah, let me let me leave you two to it, and uh, you guys can go over your. Uh, whatever your points of business you guys have to, you have to cover. And uh, yeah, man, I thanks for being crab on. Business. Crab time. Crab time. <laughs> crab, yeah, crab time. Crab time. All right, guys. Thanks, bye. Bye. See ya. Cheers.
Cheers. Yeah.